with you. It's taking ownership of the things that I'm doing. That's not quite right. Because it's easy to look out and be like, mm, you're doing this to me. You're making me feel like this. Mm. But actually, what is it that I'm doing that needs to change? Yeah. And so sometimes you don't even know that you don't like your whole self because your mind, it's like your mind erases the parts of you that... <laughs> But those parts and makes it acceptable. We're so, yeah. we're so good at like justifying things as well. Oh, it's fine. I can. Mm, is it fine? Is it really fine? Is this this got longevity? I don't think so. And we easily say things like, "Well, that's just how I am." It's like, okay, but do you want to be? Do do you, I, do you want that? Do you- Hello, and welcome to episode three of the Expression of Love podcast. I'm glad you're back. It is your host, Soul Expression. And today I had the pleasure of speaking with an artist named Geneva. Geneva is a singer songwriter who just released uh, recently her new music video for her song entitled Plant Care. She is a singer songwriter out of London, England. She is a mother. Um, She's a genuinely lovely person that I just, I had to bring on the show because she exudes this vibe that I was just like, man, you, I feel like you existing is an expression of love, not in any weird way. <laughs> and so I had to bring her on the show. We, we had a great, great, pleasant conversation about a myriad of things. We touched on why creativity is important for both children and adults and how to cultivate um, creativity in growing minds right we talked about giving yourself space and grace to grow at your own pace Uh, you see what i did there we also talked about love right love of nature love of self music as well as love for the human experience as a whole enjoy two one Welcome, Geneva, to the Expression of Love podcast. It is so great to have you here. How are you doing? I'm so good. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. I'm your doing accent, really good, yeah. Your accent is just <laughs> lovely, I tell you. Thank you. Thank you. Yours is also lovely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, it's, it's really cool um, because... Uh, so, so I don't consider myself to have an accent and, um, I live in America, right. And so you don't. And, um, and so like, to me, you have like this really cool, like, I don't know if exotic is the right word. I don't want to make things weird, but exotic a- accent going on. And, and it's like really, really nice. If and you crisp. Think, If you think the British accent is exotic, then hey, that's that's cool. OK, Americans <laughs> are simple. We think anything is exotic. We think southern accents are exotic. OK, so anyway, um, it's great, great, great having you on. Um, and we're going to have loads of fun. It's this is um, this is not a podcast that's necessarily set up just for experts that have all of this book knowledge on these super complex topics and can give names and dates or anything. We're just pretty much going to have a a conversation with each other. And, um, you know, I have some topics and questions and things in mind, but uh, we're just going to kick things off very simply. If you could give the listening and watching audience a little bit about yourself, what you do, what your music is about and um, uh, where you're from, uh, all of that. Okay, um, so what do I do? I'm a singer, um, singer songwriter, and yeah, I that's what I do. I sing and I songwrite. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I I try to um, incorporate creativity into my into my life as much as possible. Um, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's important. It's really important. Um, where am I from? I'm, I'm currently living in London, um, but my mother is from Jamaica. My father's from Malta. So, yeah. But what else Your do mother's you know? from I'm not very good at introductions. No, 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 that's okay. That's okay. Your mother's from Jamaica, huh? Yeah. That's really cool. My wife is Jamaican. Um, Beautiful. 
she was born here in Texas, but uh, okay. uh, both of her parents are, I think, originally from the island. Yeah. So nice. um, that's, yeah, that's really part, cool. Do you know what part she's from? Well, she's, again, she's born here, but uh, her dad, I don't want to, I don't want to get it wrong. I don't want to get okay, it wrong. Okay, so. okay. <laughs> Somewhere in Jamaica. <laughs> Somewhere, yeah. Um, and I think two very different, different parts. I think one from the country, okay. one from the near the city um nice. so yeah that's small world right you always find similar yeah. as i'm growing older i'm i'm really starting to believe that um saying that you hear in like spiritual circles all the time people say you you uh attract who you are and mm -hmm. so it's like you know something is going to be similar with anybody that you that you come into contact with and i think Definitely. That's really cool. And something that you just said that really resonates with me is creativity is, is very important. And you try to incorporate creativity into everything you do. Tell, tell me a little more about that. Um, I think in terms of expression, in terms of like day to day expression, um, I think being creative helps me to sometimes just kind of contextualize my feelings and and what's happening in life um I've got my songbook here um and I just I yeah it's it's like my, it's, it's like it's like my diary it's like my therapy um but then also it's so important to have that creative creativity in the home for for, for your children as well like to, for them to see that um it's very important to expressions like my son walked that he's currently organizing his drums somewhere he's, he's doing something with his drums and mm -hmm. it's it's just nice to um have that for yourself I think especially as a child like growing up in this generation where there's like so much technology and there's so much things that are trying to pull our children's attention I think it's important to connect back to self and that's what creativity enables me us to do um, and to just express yourself authentically, whatever that sound may be, there's not really any wrong in creativity. It's just expression, isn't it? So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And beauty. Expression yes. and beauty is always somewhere mm -hmm. in creativity. Mm -hmm. um, because one man's uh, tr trash is another man's treasure, right? So although no one will create something that absolutely everyone thinks is beautiful, Right. Uh, a common saying that another common saying that, that I hear sometimes is they even crucified Christ. So no, nothing is absolutely beautiful to everybody, no matter what. Yeah. But but I think as well, like that is that's I think we're slowly moving away from it. But this this ideology that creativity has to be perfect when you're putting it out, um, it doesn't like it can be messy it can be you know I'm not pitch perfect I'm not you know I'm not the best at this that or the other but I'm, I'm good with that I'm the, the peace and the joy that I get from the expression alone is good for me yeah whatever comes from that is great but that's not the focus it's just to express yeah absolutely absolutely and and you know sometimes that's what will um kill the creativity in our children. You mentioned having creativity in the home so your, your children can be expressive and, and, and learn to come back to self, um, which I, it really, again, really resonates with me. And uh, um, sometimes what, what will sort of dim their light uh, way too early, um, not, that, not that there's a, an age where your light should be dimmed, but you know, just super duper early in life, sometimes their light is dimmed because the way that a lot of school systems around the world are set up, definitely, especially here in the United States at least, is on like, like three or four major things. One, don't cooperate. You have to figure it out yourself, which, mm -hmm you have to cooperate in the real world. It's only in school that you have to do everything by yourself. Two, you, ha you have a right and a wrong answer. You have a one right answer and a bunch of wrong answers, which again, in real world, that's not how things work. Why I never really, in school, I was always the, the 
challenging one because I would always challenge like, yeah, and I, I you have to encourage that. Have to Fight back. <laughs> yeah, be the vigilante. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, the, and, and so no cooperation, there's only one right answer. And um, um, oh, there was one more, it's leaving, it's like leaving my head, but uh, ah, it, it, it leads into, into shame is what is the, is the big point that some, somehow the way that, and it's, it's unintentional by the teachers themselves, but somehow just how the school system and grading systems and things are set up, it leads to this idea that, well, something must be wrong with me. You know, if I keep getting the wrong answers and, and I'm trying, you know, I'm studying and I'm doing what, you know, the best I can, or at least close to the best I can. And, um, and I keep getting these wrong answers. Well, something must be wrong with me. You know, why I'm not as good as Billy or Susie or, or you know, and it kind of leads to, leads to that sometimes, which that does not resonate <laughs> with me at all. Yeah, yeah. But then I think it's important because, you know, my, my son goes to school and I really, I, I really would have liked to homeschool him from when he was of the age like when he was really young um but I wasn't able to for whatever reasons but you know as I'm as he's getting older um I'm almost comforted because he goes into school and he brings light to the people around him and it's needed in schools also and you know if he comes home and he I, I we talk about his day and I do hear those things of oh well I, I should have done this or I should have done that I think at home, that's where we are able to cultivate that, like, like and just build them up. Um, we can't really rely on society to do that for our children. So, yeah. Absolutely. Definitely important. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's big. That's big. Our, our unconscious dependence on a governing body to just create our lives for us takes away from our own even to even takes away from our belief in ourselves that we can yeah. create yeah. something beautiful called my life, you know, and, and mm. that, that I am even creating my life. We think that we're just being pushed around like billiard balls, you know, mm. but no, we are making things, even if what we make ends up being a sort of, a sort of mental cage by mistake, uh, we are making that and so we can unmake that and make something new and make something beautiful yeah. Yeah. yeah and even at this age that i'm at now i'm learning that and realizing that actually the some of my thought processes and belief systems have caused me to limit myself um so it's now about unlearning those things and and remembering and it's like it's coming back to again coming back to self and unlearning and to remember the, the the true core of who i am you know so mm. yeah it's, it's like a absolutely full circle kind of thing yeah absolutely who who are you what is the true core of who you are You're on the spot <laughs> big, loaded question <laughs> right yeah, right like. right but you know and before you answer really quick you know yeah. um the work, a lot of the work that I do uh, with, with the company that I, I co-founded with my wife called Ufulu Child. Ufulu means freedom. Um, so freedom child, but it's called Ufulu Child. The, a lot of the work that I do is in coming back to the essence of my own source, of your own source. And so that, that when I hear that, I'm like, hmm, well, I wonder how much exploration you've done in such an, in such a, uh, such um, an area that is like, it, it just goes over people's heads, like not even noticed, you know, it's, yeah. it's um, unexplored, I guess is a good way to put it. Because we're not encouraged um, to, we're not encouraged to be individual and to explore ourselves. We're encouraged to be part of a society and, 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 and current and the same, but it's breaking from those molds and, and, being brave and bold enough to be like, actually, this is who I am. And I think, you know, I've, I've grown up in church and that was interesting. Like this, this, this journey of spiritualism and, and finding who I am 
um, away from religion has been so interesting. Um, so I'm still I'm still growing and learning and discovering those parts of me. And I just I'm, I'm in a space of holding. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a place of holding space for myself so that I can take the time to just get to know myself. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, that brings us to well, who are you? <laughs> who am I? Are you really? Yes. What is? I am. Your I essence? am a wild woman. Mm. I'm a wild woman. I am a wild woman, and um, I love I love feeling free. I love I don't like feeling restricted. I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> um, and obviously, sometimes you do have to be you do have to listen. But I I, I follow my own path, and um, creation is so wrapped up in that. I know we've touched that already, but I think that's at the core of me. Yeah. And um, I feel lo- most like myself when I'm able to creatively express myself. Um, but yeah. And do you, do you I'm think this wild and ethereal and yeah? Do you uh, pardon me? Do you, do you think this um, this journey of self discovery is ultimately what led you to to fall in love with music the way that you have? Um, both, both, I guess, listening and also creating it, because again, we we are it creators. Leads me to fall in love with music. Mm, mm-hmm. No, I would say mm-hmm. that. Did, so, so say that again. Did did the journey of self discovery lead me to fall in love with music? I think no. Music was it always felt like the first point. Um, my family are very creative and musical, um, so that's always been there. Um, but I think as I found my own voice and my own sound, it's encouraged me to find um, f- find myself. Um, so yeah, music has always been the starting point. Mm. Yeah. Mm. That's very it's interesting. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> more on that note. Uh, what? So so in 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 your singer songwriter um career well i say career but i mean whenever it started right so maybe before you well before you were making uh other people know that you do this and that you do it for real um what are what are some of the inspirations both both material inspiration and spiritual inspirations for like the song concepts and titles and things that you that you end up com- coming up with? So it's interesting because I used to write a lot about pain um, and things that brought me pain. And, and I, I wrote music as a way to comfort myself. But as I step away from, and as I step away from pain, we will always experience pain. But as I'm moving away from living in a, place where I think that pain always has to be your greatest teacher and and moving towards the notion that love is actually the greatest teacher it, it's being reflected in my music and um and my lyrics and my lyrics and that's 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 beautiful to me I actually used to have a bit of a block when writing about music which is quite interesting um but I feel like that's lifting now and I think that's partly because of the the journey of self-discovery as well mm. um but yeah. yeah. Very, very I cool. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Uh, very cool, very but cool. Yeah, um, my, my music is heavily um, wrapped up in like nature as well. I, there's so much fractal patterns and similarities. You know, we are nature and, and I find so much beauty in just observing what what nature and the seasons do and how that relates back to us. And I think it allows me to have a little bit of grace towards myself. Um, just knowing that, you know, things are seasonal and things do change. And, you know, in the moments of dark, in the moments where things feel void or bare, there's a, a silent brewing, a, a silent cultivation of life that we can't see and, and it will bloom but we just have to give it time and space in the right environments, you know? So, yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's heavily reflected in my music. Absolutely. Um, 
Yeah. And especially, you know, especially you said, you know, um, you started out writing a lot about uh, like pain and I, so, so same here. Um, I'm also singer, songwriter, rapper, songwriter um, myself. And when I started taking writing seriously, it was right after my high school sweetheart heartbreak. It was right after the, the separation. It was a two and a half year, very beautiful. I mean, obviously up and down because high school, right? Is we have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> but all, the um, lines, all of the, all of that, yeah. <laughs> but but it was it was so full of life, me and 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 and, and this woman. And um and so you know we we split and there's there's a little bit of, of time before it hits, but turns out I was in my opinion very quickly replaced and it just it just you know it just <laughs> took the whole thing out and like shredded up in a paper shredder yeah. um and I, and so I, I wrote and that was what I wrote about for about a year or so and um and when I moved into also incorporating rap that was when I could do other things because with rap you don't have to be as careful. Well, in my opinion, my opinion is you don't have to be as as carefully. Um, there's less notes. There's still right. You still use your voice in certain ways, but there's less like yeah. carrying melodies and, and notes and things. So you think about writing rap differently than you think about writing um, singing, singing lyrics. Why don't we have a word for that? I need another word so I can make it easy. <laughs> but <laughs> but so, uh, uh, singing song lyrics, because rap songs are still songs, but singing song lyrics, you think about writing those differently. I do both. And um, and yeah, it, was, it wasn't until I started, started trying to become a, a rapper that I was able to move away from just everything was about pain. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and yes, you you also you 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 said something. You said something about the plant life. You have new this new love for plant life, and your your newest single was called what again? I don't know. Plant care. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So wonderful, and the visuals, guys. You Thank have to you. check this out. Definitely check this out. Um, what? Uh, tell me about plant care, and and you just went through this whole journey, and and. How was that? What 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 was that? What was it about and how was? <laughs> okay, so plant care is similar to what I was saying about knowing that the same care that we put into plants is the same care that we have to put into us. We have specifications. Um, and it's important to make sure that the environment that we are in is 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 noted and um, appreciated acknowledged um, and that environment can in include like conversations and friends and that's that's really what plant care is about um just trying to think of the lyrics <laughs> but yeah it's i think if you're not a plant mom or dad if you have pets you understand like we, we pay so much attention to it you know we don't want to get it wrong we know you know how much humidity it needs or whatever and I we really do neglect those parts of ourselves sometimes like even in conversations sometimes you know I've been I've been in conversations and I've sat there and not necessarily agreed with anything but even me being in that room with those people I'm just and it, it does something to my spirit and the fact I allow myself to sit there and then I wonder why I feel off after that's because I put myself in the wrong environment and the more you do that the more you kind of kill or, or damage parts of you so I yeah that's really what plant care is mm. about just paying attention to your specifications and um yeah yeah like what what pouring back into yourself in a way, yeah. like watering your, yeah. your plants, huh? Um, Definitely. That's And also like giving yourself space to branch out and 
you know, and, and reroute. Plants do so much, the roots do so much, the leaves do so much, and it's really, it's, it's really about that, so, yeah. Yeah, and you can, you can, you can also look at yourself as um, having roots, having branches of understanding and also branches of yeah. the, like the behaviors that you do come from somewhere, come from something somewhere, come from combinations. Yeah. Sometimes people develop behaviors that don't come from their immediate family because it came from television, yeah. came from their favorite show mm -hmm. or their favorite character in a favorite book. And, and so there's branches and there's roots and there's sunlight there's there's sunlight and rain for all and soil for for all of us in, in various ways as well just to expand the metaphor yeah. um i think it's like being really it's important to be intentional about it as well isn't it because what you said about not being aware of the external things that can affect our ourselves our, you know our beings um but then when you do start to realize oh that's like you just become more aware of those things so yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> no i'm i'm glad i'm i'm, I'm glad that we I, I definitely resonate with that um overall message of know thyself right and and take like going beyond the surface level of self-care and 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 I, I definitely would like to hear your your thoughts on this but there's there's like a level one and a level two for self-care where level one is kind of, is important, but it's kind of like um, big things that you can do like once or twice. And there's, that's, that's level one. Like, you know, I'm gonna go take a vacation. I'm gonna go do something for self-care is, is the kind of level one. And then there's level two, which is changing your everyday habits so that you are cultivating the you that you want to be in the future. Does that make sense? Did I put that in a... That's massive. Did I tie that in yeah, a... Yeah, that's massive. And then that, <laughs> but that part is like, you have to come to a place where you take ownership for the things that you don't like about yourself. It's mm. like, okay, this is not working. So what do I need to do to change that, that routine? Yeah, that what do I need to do in my routine to change how I feel about myself? Yeah, that's been big for me over the past couple of years, taking ownership of the things that I'm doing. That's not quite right. Because it's easy to look out and be like, mm, you're doing this to me. You're making me feel like this. Mm. Actually, what is it that I'm doing that needs to change? Yeah. And so sometimes you big. don't even know that you don't like your whole self because your mind, it's like your mind erases the parts of you that, <laughs> but those parts- it makes it acceptable. We're so, yeah. we're so good at like justifying things as well. Oh, it's fine. I can, mm, is it fine? Is it really fine? Is this, this got longevity? I don't think so. So yeah. Yeah. I, and, I can, and I agree and, with you on that. And we easily say things like, well, that's just how I am like okay but do you want to be do, do you do you want that do you want to be you know destructive or isolated all the time you know do you want that mm. no yeah. one's no one's criminalizing you for who you are do you want to be who you are or do you want to keep evolving and keep yeah doing the human journey so to speak yeah um i agree yeah, and, and you know, uh, just on that note, I think that um, the, the thing you said earlier about, you know, you have your, your songbook and music has become and, and can become a diary of sorts. Uh, when you are a writer or a creator of, of any kind of art, because visual artists for this, it, this also applies to, to, to visual art as well, you have a way of facing your demons and um, at least acknowledging them because you have an avenue of expressing them that, that you feel safe, right? You don't have to always put it into words. Sometimes you can put it into notes and you can put it into oohs and ahs and, and the way that you play the piano or, um, or, or how you draw a picture. Um, it can be put into that, right? Um, 
man, so this is this is this is very 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 important stuff. Um, what what do you what do you think? What do you think really connects the artistic expression? The the um, yeah artistic expression and self discovery. Um, at least for you, like what, what do you think really connects those worlds? Because some people may see them as, well, one's just a hobby and one's like really important, but they actually are, you know, so interconnected in, in my lens. Um, what about you? Self-discovery and artistic expression. I think what connects the two for me is truth, um, honesty with myself. If I'm not gonna be honest with myself, who am I being honest with? <laughs> Um, and I think it's different for everybody, you know, there's, there are singers, there are artists that are good at writing just abstract things or, you know, things that are generic. Um, but for me, I, I know that it's my duty to honor my truth at every stage that I'm at. And it's like, sometimes I've written songs and I look back at it and I'm just like, mm, I don't really think like that anymore and that's okay yeah um yeah man <laughs> but it was it was important for that time and I honor that time you know I honor that place that I was and and I give myself grace for that place that I was in and I'm grateful that I've moved away from that place um so I think that's important too like not being too hard on yourself for for those moments that you, that you no longer resonate with um, but yeah, I think truth is the connection for me. Honesty with self is the connection for me. And mm. that is ugly sometimes. <laughs> that is so ugly sometimes, you know? Um, but one thing that's beautiful is that when I share some of my songs, um, because they come from a place of honesty, of, of raw emotion, a lot of people can connect with that and that is beautiful it's yeah it's really not about anything else but if somebody else can feel like they're seen or heard that's that's i've done i've done a good job <laughs> yeah 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 um what you just said about the uh looking at you know old lyrics or old um or listening to old old creations and feeling like Ooh, that was, that was a bit mm. immature or, or mm. hasty. Um, you know, that was a bit of, I don't, it's not really my conclusion anymore. It's, yeah. it can, it can be so, it's like, like, um, and I'll just, can I, if I can be a little open and, and honest with you, of course. Um, I was very, what people in America would say now is homophobic, but it wasn't homophobic. It was just culturally, I was conditioned to, with my straight friends only, not with actual homosexual people, but with my, with my straight friends, act like anything that was slightly, um, stereotypically for the opposite sex yeah i was yeah. like oh that's gay that's mm. this oh you're a faggot whatever and mm. as you know and and very early on in my writing um especially raps because i was a young man some of that was there and it's like i'm glad i never released this it would not have aged well you know <laughs> it would not have um <laughs> And, and it's not a reflection of who I, I am, right, present moment. It's, it's a reflection of growth. It's a reflection mm -hmm. of something that it can look so ugly on the surface. But if you, if you look at it kind of zoomed out and say, well, wait a minute, maybe the story doesn't end here. Maybe there's a redemption arc coming then then it, it it makes it it makes the ugly parts beautiful does that make sense yeah yeah that makes sense yeah what do you what do you think what do you also, think about that yeah but then also like do you feel that do you feel that 
in that place that you were expressing this, and I want to use the word toxic masculinity, do you feel, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, do you feel that you were suppressing the softer sides of you? Do you feel like you had to suppress the softer sides of you? It, it, yeah, it always, it always comes with some subconscious, you know, and I, sometimes I shy away from using subconscious because a part of it's conscious. We lie to ourselves, but, uh, but it is largely subconscious. So I, I digress. Um, there's always a little subconscious fear that this quality of feminine energy is in me or this quality of whatever I'm demonizing or, or making fun of um, and insulting is in me. And I have the capacity for acting in this way as well and still being happy. And there's fear of that. There's fear that I can be like that which I was conditioned to just think was the worst, <laughs> the worst thing ever. And um, yeah, it can be quite surprising when 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 I reflect in that way and when we when we have the chance to to look at it. Um, even like family tapes, you know, you look at family tapes of you as a kid and you and all of your cousins and, and siblings and some of the stuff that you say, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's like, what are you talking but about? Then it's, 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 it's interesting because like, I've looked back at things before in disgust or with, with disgust, um, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I used to think like that or, or, or have that view. But now I'm in this space where I'm honoring my inner child, but I'm also honoring I feel this like parent within me, like I'm parenting myself as well. So to look back on those past ideologies, I do it with like this this love of and an appreciation of how far I've come. Well, rather than condemning that. Do right. you know what I mean? Yes. Um, but yeah, yeah. Yeah. Self self judgment is an easy, dangerous, slippery slope very easy um, way to, to slip into shame. I don't think it's automatically shame. I think judgment has a, a little way to go before it gets to shame, but mm. it will get there. And it's, it's slippery, like I said. Yeah, um, so, so swimming back up to the surface a little, you know, <laughs> <laughs> putting some of this, you know, um, as they say, harsh truth to the side. Uh, you have a music video either out or coming for Plant Care. Um, yes, we didn't out. get to talk yeah. about that. It's out now? Okay, wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, definitely going to go watch. Is it on YouTube? Yeah, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Okay, wonderful. I will have the link in the description of this video. What, um, oh, cool. what was that journey like and, and where did you know, some of your ideas come from or did it all just blossom, pun intended? Yeah, oh. um, I think so. Plant Care, the video for Plant Care is my first music video, first of many, um, God willing. Congratulations. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, and it was quite, it was, it was a nice place to begin um, because I do feel at home. As I said, nature, I, I feel most at home and at peace. Um, so it kind of like the idea happened quite organically and it was an easy song for me to do a video for um, tending to plants, being out in nature. Like it was, it was really that. And because I was so relaxed and in a safe environment, I was just able to be free and dance a little and stretch a little in the video. Like it's, it's very chilled. Um, it's not, you know, too staged or anything like that. I'm not really good at stuff like that anyway. I just like things to be quite organic and you know if it comes across a little bit you awkward know, or funny right. or whatever, like mm -hmm. that's that's me. And uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's just a nice chilled video. So um yeah, definitely go and watch it if you can. <laughs> oh absolutely. Every I and I think it, I, I think I would like I my intention for it is to encourage people to just be themselves as well like it's 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 okay to be a little bit awkward or a little bit just just be who you are and um i think that comes through in the video i think i hope yeah yeah um 
did did most of the uh like locations and um shots and things come through the the videographer or did they come from from you like how, how involved heavily, are you as an artist um, yeah it was heavily through my ideas of course the videographer was amazing um he he suggested certain things but I knew that I wanted a little bit of shadow imagery as well and that's something that I will come back to um in other videos but um I just knew that I wanted my plants, some incense, um, some candles, and to just be in a room on a sofa, like dancing. And and then there's another part of it where I'm in the forest and um, it's almost like my, like in the forest is my higher self. Like I step into my power and I, I realize who I am kind of thing. Um, so yeah, those are the two scenes in that video. And I really feel that at this moment in my life, I feel like, okay, this is me today. Um, but then I have these visions of my higher self, like me just, and not in a hyper-spiritual way, but just a more, a more aware, a, 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 a greater level of awareness, a greater level of understanding. Um, and so I think the, the video reflects that yeah don't know if i'm explaining mm. myself properly but yeah no uh, it's hard to yeah it's hard to because it's it's hard to put into words what we say higher self what exactly we mean because it's yeah it's not personal mm. right uh, a, a higher order of intelligence is not down here with all of the collective it is more related to the totality and the totality is not the collective. Um, excuse me if I sound a little woo-woo, but it's true. Um, so so it's, I understand it's, it's hard to it's hard to put into words, but a higher a higher order of of love and emotion and, and intelligence is not an individual. It's a it's a it's a which is where where our intuition comes from is this higher self that we that we speak of which you know it's it's really funny to one more one more point and and then I, I want I want to hear your thoughts on it your higher self if it's your higher self it's yourself already you know and people have this idea of spirituality yeah. that I have to become this better thing than I than little wretched yeah. me and it's like no you're perfect yeah. as you are you have to grow yeah. in yeah. certain ways, but no, you're, you're growing into yourself. You're, you're, it's you already him. won, baby, yeah. you already won. <laughs> yeah. And it's so funny because my next single that's coming out and I don't want to plug my music too much on this, but. You can plug away, Geneva, called... plug away. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's called, it's already mine. I'm already mine. And, and that is, that is about exactly that knowing that everything that you seek, everything that you think you should become is actually here already. It's just about being aware of that and, and owning that, stepping into that. It's not a far away thing. Um, and I really, I'm trying to live that. And it's hard because when you've told yourself these things for such a long time, coming away from that and being like, oh, actually I am love, I am, abundance I am you know all of these things that we sometimes chase after like it's tiring because like, it's, it's already here just yeah stop and be in the moment and be present and yeah and, and I think a large it's part funny. of it is giving yourself permission to fail along the way giving yourself permission to get it all the way wrong and just be face first in dog shit. And then coming from that, taking a shower, right? <laughs> Cleaning up, starting over. Yeah. Uh, my wife calls it hitting the reset button and um and 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 showing up. You know? And that's the most important part is the showing up part. Again and again. It's it's very brave. It's a brave thing to do. Um and I think people are afraid to 
make mistakes because you know we've got these time pressures um oh, i'm a certain age so i shouldn't be making these mistakes anymore and i would say that there is a part of me that does think that if i'm honest there is a part of me that does not want to keep learning the same lessons like i have to now take responsibility for okay if the same things keep showing up what am i doing wrong if that makes sense like what is it about me that keeps attracting these same cycles um but then again dusting yourself off as you say reset and we go again and it builds so much tenacity you know when you do believe that you can just reset um yeah yeah because the the mind will tell you that when you feel fear it's time to stop but when you have like sometimes when the same lesson keeps or the same i'll say the same problem keeps repeating itself you're building resistance to the mind telling you that it's time to give up you're 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 not going through it only because you haven't gotten the lesson yet which is something in the popular spiritual circles it's not always just that sometimes it's that and i don't want to say that's not important to pay attention to but sometimes it's also you're building resistance to this kind of problem to this kind of fear that will tell you to go home and quit and 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 you stop on your journey and you're building that resistance telling your mind no i'm in charge you listen to me we are going to not give up on this and you're building that um you said tenacity yeah yes yeah <laughs> yeah and with that as well i think i have realized or i'm realizing the importance in controlling the mind because sometimes thoughts are liars sometimes the thoughts that we think aren't from us sometimes you know they're based from past experiences and traumas and what we've said before you know tv programs or conversations that we've had so really deciphering what are true voices and what is a thought that i can just let pass over like i'm going to dismiss that thought that doesn't resonate with me and i think that is one thing that has changed for me um over the recent like over the past couple of years leaving some things like just allowing some thoughts to to not not internalize every thought that i have oh i thought this so I, i must feel like this or this is who i am or do you know what i mean yeah yes. so yeah yes yeah. and it it all it all really my identity on say that again sorry no you you first please No I was just going to say not basing my identity on my thoughts because that's what I used to do and that's what I sometimes still do but I'm working on it. <laughs> working right. On it for sure. right. We're in your corner. We're supporting. Thank you. Um, absolutely. Um Who are who are some of your favorite artists and if they're not the same who are some of your inspirations because sometimes sometimes they're not the same like i one of my favorite artists for instance um is lil wayne but he doesn't inspire anything that i create because he's just a whole different lane why why, do, why what what about what about lil wayne inspires you um his his what ability to treat? yeah his, his ability to uh to um um create a very witty punchline consistently with the, with like the most character you've ever seen in a rap like he he is full of character right if he is i disagree fundamentally with so much of what he says but it doesn't take away from the hard work and and god-given talent right um spirit given talent that it takes to come up with these witty ways of of using you know metaphor simile it just these these um uh, what do they call L literary uh you know uh ah 
the tools. Like imagery or? Yeah, imagery, yeah. metaphor, simile, um, to use these things to just, to just like make you go, whoa, how did he do that? Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. just words, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, another one, Eminem, who, who, you know, I hold in very high regard in terms of his ability to use words um, and, and his, his voice to do the same thing, just full of, full of character. And yet also like all of these technical abilities that he has with putting words one in front of the other, you know, and, 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 um, screaming, for instance, at the right, at the very right moment to make you like, you know, and, and, um, yeah just all of all of that it did they make it makes them some of my favorite but my inspirations are more so like Indy Irie or Lauren Hill or um you know other more uplift because because my content is more uplifting and so the inspiration for the content is not in necessarily Eminem or or Lil Wayne or uh other people but you know more so like Kendrick Lamar or people that are more set in, in, in uplifting content. Speaking of, did you listen to Kendrick's new album? Did I, did I listen to Kendrick's? Oh my God. I, 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 so, so when a, when an album comes out or when new music comes out, admittedly, I don't always go to it on the first day. I have to be ready for it. I'm just like, let me just, am I ready? And I remember on this particular day, I was washing my windows and I put Kendrick's album on and my windows were wide open. And I can't remember the name of the song, but it was so racially charged. And I was like, should I turn this down a little bit? Because my neighbors are going to be like, mm. but then I was like, no, let me turn this up. It was, <laughs> it's, his, he's just, he's so, He's just so brave. Like he's not even brave, but he's just so he's piercing. His lyrics are piercing. And they cut through just all the rubbish, all of the fabrication. What he like, he just says what he needs to say. And I find find it interesting because Kendrick's a Gemini and he dropped it in the Mercury retrograde, which was in Gemini. So I was like, did you do that on purpose, Kendrick? I think he did. Um, but yeah, he's dope. Man, do you how how do you feel about the album? Well, I still haven't turned it off. My my favorite Count Me Out is like a game changer. Count Me Out, um, Savior, uh, the one with him. Uh, I mean, shout out to Baby Keem. His was great too, but 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 Kendrick's Savior was uh, ridiculous. Obviously, um, uh, the single is night this shit hard that that was crazy good yes i think that was the one i'm talking about yeah yeah, yeah. take it yeah. off yeah yep so um good. so good but i yeah i love the whole thing i do what i do is it's like i'll take a bike ride me and my wife will ride bikes and i'll put that on and it's just start to finish except if i'm riding by kids and we cry together comes on i gotta skip that one it's way too hard okay. it's too hard it's not for the kids yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then it's also it's also quite nice for you know for, I, I wonder how our children feel when they hear us listening to music like that because I al almost feel like there's a level of like militant there's this militant energy that comes with, with Ken some of Kendrick's music and I love that you know, I think it reinforces this this feeling of protection. Like my son knows I will ride for him. <laughs> and um yeah, I feel like I wonder I wonder what they feel. They feel like, oh wow, mummy's mm -hmm. mummy's being a little bit aggressive today. Good. At least you know that I, you know, I'm soft, but I have that side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um I don't have children, but yeah, my, like my nieces and nephews and they have no idea, uh, the beast that lives inside of me, you know, that can, you know, um, yeah, that, my will, son knows. that will protect them. He knows. Yeah. My, my son definitely is aware of it, but I think it's good. It's good for him to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a fire sign. He's a water sign. 
So oh, sometimes yeah? he's like, mum, mum. <laughs> Um, and it's, it's good. It's, it's good. So the balance is, is necessary in this. I'm situation. a Sagittarius. Okay, so you're fire too. Yeah. Yep. Cool. I'm double fire too because my moon is Leo. So my emotions are Sagittarius oh, cool. and my sun sign is I mean, my emotions are fire and my sun sign is fire. So yes. <laughs> I, I, cool. I get it in. <laughs> um. You ever, hey, do you ever, do you ever, um, because, yeah, you just, you also said, you know, that it, Kendrick's Gemini, he released it in, in Mercury Retrograde, which is, was in Gemini at the time. Do you, do you, do you relate um, astrology to uh, your expressions of love that, that in, in any way, shape or form that um, you'd like to share just off the top of your head, of course, so if I can rephrase that. it, do you, do you pay enough attention to, you know, this is happening and Saturn is doing this and, and Jupiter is moving yeah. into this next week to be like, okay, you know, this mm -hmm. is going to influence my, either my writing yeah. or, or how I am at the dinner yeah. table or whatever. Yeah. In, yeah. In what uh, recently, I think, I think, and what, sorry, and what, sorry? In what ways? And in what way did you say? Okay, I feel I feel a sneeze coming on. So if I <laughs> if I do sneeze, apologies. Um, I have always had like a I've always been intrigued by astrology, um, but it's only until recently that I've really started to immerse myself in it. Um, as I said, growing up in church, we were never really taught that that's acceptable. Um, but you know, as I'm learning more, there's a lot of astrology. There's a lot of there's a lot of things in the Bible that, that you know talk about astrology, and um, we won't get into that. It's another conversation for another day. But yes, I I definitely do pay attention to what's happening in the ether. So I I, I think it's important. Um, we are. We're, we're connected to everything and I think it just helps to make a little bit of sense of everything um how I project myself into the world and just gives some explanation as to why things may be the way they are um and even collectively as well why we may be feeling because there's there are a couple of, of and I'm, I'm not an expert um, some of my astrologer friends will watch this like <laughs> but definitely there are some things collectively that we feel that are heavily to do with you know the, the placements of the planets and stuff so on my calendar I have like um, take extra time today be extra patient today if if this is happening or or yeah I, I think it's important it's important mm. it's, it's just a little bit of a guide but on the flip side I, and I don't know if this is right or wrong, but I don't like to give too much power to anything. Um, so if I find myself checking on something obsessively, I kind of feel like I need to detach from it a little bit. Um, I'm like, okay, cool. Because it's like you're searching for the answers that are outside of yourself a little bit. That's, that's what I find. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. It is interesting. For me, this Mercury retrograde was intense. Mm. It was intense. So I did find myself um, kind of looking at what's happening and yeah. What about you? Um, do you? I, do you I follow. Uh, yeah, I I follow uh, someone on Instagram, and and I, I know this person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, a little bit. Um, her name is Shawnee. She's super cool. 11 moons, 11 on Instagram. And, uh, she gives like what's to come and what's to, and it's, it's sort of the same thing. Although I don't, I, I don't, I don't write it down on like a calendar to remember or anything because yeah. Yeah. all in all, I don't have as much judgment for my mistakes anymore that I, that compared to how I used to think. So if I 
mess up and turns out Jupiter was pushing me that way, then all right, okay, I'll try better. You know, I'll try harder, you know, as, as, as the days go on. But do you think that's because, yeah, but well, well, real quick, but I do like and enjoy both the reflection and the sort of prediction, like, okay, so I want to, you know, for the whole next, you know, two weeks, I do want to watch out for if my sexual energy is going this way, or if my, ang- you know, sort of the, the angry, angry characters that live within me are, are going to be riled up, or if I'm going to mm-hmm. feel like I'm waiting for something, because sometimes it influences the, mm-hmm. the need for something that's not there. And so you just feel like mm-hmm. you're waiting and you can't move because you're waiting for this thing. Um, yeah. I do, I do like to, to reflect on those things, but, but I, I yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it's a bit of fun for me. It's not, it's not, um, mm. cause I don't judge my, I don't judge my mistakes too much anymore. I'm actually a survivor of suicidal mm. depression. So I've, I've, I've just, but, I, but I beat it though. It will never come back. Um, so, so there's, um, there's a, there's a lightheartedness about everything for me now, you know? Um, sometimes I, I notice things like, dang, I haven't talked to my mother in, in a while now. Oh, I'll give her a call right now. You know, and it's just kind of like, oh, well, all right. Yeah. You know, stuff like that is just lighthearted where before I would be like, dang, what's wrong with me? You know, oh, I'm such a bad son, mm-hmm. you know, or something like that. Mm-hmm. And this is just an example, you know, shout out to mom dupes. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> but that's dope. I love that. I love that. Less judgment to making mistakes, and I guess that kind of is. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think when you, when you're in a, a loving environment and a loving relationship or a nurturing relationship, you're allowed to make those mistakes. You're allowed to just be. Um, rather than always feeling like you have to become something, as we said before. And I think I'm definitely um, noticing the difference in the beco- in the becoming and just the just being and just allowing yourself to, okay, if you blow, you blow. It is what it is. Like, And obviously, if that was a constant thing, then you have to address it. But every now and again, like, just want to bust and just yeah be free so yeah i I do feel you on that one do get that absolutely um we are coming towards the close um but i do want to say i didn't get to hear your inspirations and favorite artists yet first Mm -hmm. and then i have another follow-up question okay so my inspirations and And no rush by the way um, i said we're coming to the club but it doesn't mean like there's a hard cutoff i just want to let you know so inspirations inspirations and what was the other one inspirations and favorite artists oh yeah yeah so there's so many (laughs) there are so many trying to differentiate favorite artists to inspirations i love and i will always have a deep love for gospel um I just, I just, and there's, so Fred Hammond for me is my favorite okay. artist, artist of all time. Yeah, I love him. Um, he just, it's just a sincere worship and I love that. And as I have continued, as I'm continuing on this, this journey, um, one, one, another part of me, not to jump all the way back, but when we were talking about when you said, what is the core of you? Like, who are you? Um, one thing that I do know is that I'm a worshipper and um, one thing that has become apparent is it's not only tied to like that Christian worship it can be kirtans it can be like it's 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 just worship of of source um, to giving reverence to source and um, it's so beautiful to hear um how that relates to any religion or any, you know, whatever walk of life, whatever path you choose, just to give that reverence and worship from your core. Like, that's so beautiful. So, yes, Fred Hammond is one of my inspirations for sure. Um, I love Billie Holiday. Um, 
she's she's very somber she her lyrics were mm. often very somber and you can hear the pain um but the way that she expressed it so beautifully and and raw and it's just yeah stunning um and also yeba is yeba is one of my favorite artists um again her lyrics and i think it's changing now actually i, I hear like a difference in her lyrics um mm-hmm. but i think her first few songs were heavily you know about the the traumatic experiences that, that she's that she's gone through um but i think the reason why i love that is because people are often scared to show those parts of themselves the mm. parts that may feel or seem ugly it's like oh let me hide that the shadow parts you don't really want anybody to see like i think when you come to peace with those parts of yourself then you know you accept yourself as a ho- as as the whole person that you are um so yeah yabba and billy holiday and fred hammond i love eric badu um she's probably Oh yeah, I was I was going to bring up Erica Erica. Badu when you said you wanted to have an uh, incense and your plants in the video. I said it's like Erica Badu <laughs> in my head. Erica is just I love her so much. Um Yeah, and I I I love artists that you can't compare anybody to like there's nobody like Erica. There's there's nobody like yeah. and and she's dope she just does what she does she just is who she is and she's unapologetic with it and that for me is something that i'm definitely trying to cultivate within myself being unapologetic and not being afraid to or not 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 being afraid to just express myself like that and if it if you like it cool if you don't cool but i'm going to be me regardless so yeah wonderful those, those few i could go on gregory porter i could go on but i won't right i mean and if you said fred hammond and you don't say smoky norful i mean then what are we doing you know i mean that is true that's true cuz i that's very I true i mean i'm i'm pretty far removed from the, i grew up in the church too but i'm pretty far removed from it now in terms of just in terms of dogma and, and doctrine not in terms of passion mm-hmm. uh for for yeah. love for god but just just in terms mm-hmm. of the dogma Um but the smoke yeah. will never go anywhere. That's that's my man's. Like love that. Love that. God. Yeah. Um thank you and so that's, much. And that's that's another this this. No, no, you first. You first. You first. <laughs> no, I was just going to say like being able to uh, um because that was that was something that was quite challenging um for me like kind of coming away from these indoctrinations and realizing my place in in spirituality in in my relationship with with God um like how can i still have a relationship with God but not be a christian and not like it it was just always separate and making peace with the fact that i still have a beautiful relationship with the most high outside of all of these things that I've been taught being able to still worship outside of the things that I've been taught and no longer agree with has been a beautiful journey for me so yeah I'm making peace with it slowly <laughs> yeah yeah um it 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 almost feels like you're betraying something that's supposed to be sacred until you find out mm-hmm. that you are what's sacred your relationship is what's sacred mm-hmm. and you the core of you is what's sacred mm-hmm. not the not the book not the the character in the book not the you know not the history of the you know belief system but you you are the sacred it's you mm-hmm. it's always been you yeah. and um and then 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 you can, you can be free and again you can give yourself permission to fail right you can what we talked about earlier you know <clears throat> yeah definitely um where can people connect with you find your music watch your videos video music first first music video but if you also have other music other videos yeah where can they connect with you at? yes um 
though you can find me on social media which I have a love-hate relationship with let me not even lie to you <laughs> but you can find me on social media um, just my name Geneva um, and Spotify and Apple Music all, all of them all of them things um, on yeah and YouTube just Geneva just my name yeah and there's more to come. There's so much more to come. Um, but I am not in a rush. Um, everything un is unfolding at its pace. And while I am applying, my friend calls it relaxed intensity, which I love. While there is a relaxed yeah. intensity, um, this relaxed pressure, I am not going to call, I'm not going to stress myself to to release music and to like you know put out I'm not doing that um yeah I'm not doing it um so yes it's more there's more to come and it will come when it's time <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know it's, it's interesting we talked about Kendrick Lamar a little bit he doesn't release every year you know he doesn't he releases when he's when he's good and ready and when he feels that he has something yeah. has something there um you know, J. Cole, uh, there's a bunch of artists that they'll release when Love J. Cole. Yeah, when it's when it's time and when they have put together I guess a body of work that says what they want to say. So so yeah, take your time. Otherwise you're just making noise. Otherwise you're just releasing stuff for the sake of other people. And we live in a in a society where, you know, we live in a world where it's instant gratification and there's constant it's constant content and it's constant like music and but i think if you're going to just release something just to be heard then it's it may not be from the core of you so yeah 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 thank you so 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 very much this has been beyond a pleasure uh speaking with you today and, and thank you so much for having me i'm so grateful that you asked me something also that's beautiful when you create it's like you give advice to yourself isn't it and yes. you know, you're able to okay some things you leave and you say okay i've grown past that but then you're able to in those dark moments come back to what you've created and uplift yourself and that is also beautiful so as well i will be i will be watching this back and and um, receiving all of the good good from it too. Right. So thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Have a good one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. You too. <laughs>